Hey guys. So there's been a few questions uh, from folks about calibrating their D1 displays for the CR6. Uh, and in fact, I think all D1 displays are going to calibrate the same way. They just don't all have the same attributes. So the information I give you here is valid for the CR6 display, which happens to be a certain resolution, a certain orientation. Same logic should apply to other displays, but you'll need to make your own uh, T5L config file if you're not the same resolution and orientation. So there's a breakpoint in the compatibilities here and the calibrations between DGIS 4.5 and operating systems below that. Um, at 4.5, um, the DWIN guys have introduced a new calibration process, which in all fairness is much easier to work with than the one that came before. But it's not the first time they've been able to calibrate displays. You can calibrate the, the displays that are, precede 4.5 in almost the same way, but not with the same elegance and not the same visual cues. So it's easier to be mistaken about whether the display is or is not in fact in calibration mode when you're going through the process. You'll know your screen is not calibrated correctly from a touchscreen point of view anyway. If your menu comes up, let's say you see the four buttons, but when you're tapping around on the buttons, you're not getting anything. You might get a beep because the touchscreen is still configured to beep when touched, but it doesn't realize where it has been touched. It thinks you've touched it somewhere else. And that is the configuration calibration issue. So, one option we've been offering recently is um, we now have a recalibrated version of the touchscreen firmware for CF 6.1, which will run on any DGIS, so you don't need to recalibrate your display in order to run it. You just load it up and go. But if you're already at this stage, you're already in this condition where running it isn't working because touching the buttons isn't working, then calibration may be the way forward for you. So I'm, what I'm going to do, I, I spent some time today doing it the way I thought it should be done and finding out that I had gaps in my knowledge. Hopefully I've closed those gaps because I'm going to show you now live video. Eh? I'm going to show you how I do it and if it doesn't work I'm not posting the video. So by the time you're looking at this it worked. What I'm going to do is I'm going to um, walk you through putting the right files on the disk, putting the disk in the, in the display, flashing the display, running through the calibration process, so that if it's not working for you, at least you now can rewind on the video and watch it more slowly and more carefully and notice maybe you've skipped a step or jumped ahead. I've posted the files that you will need online because at one point I intended to distribute this complete with this capability, uh, distribute the refactored um, DWIN touch um, screen firmware with this capability in a special folder. I, I, I chickened out, I left it there, but I stopped distributing in, in the updated releases because I could see it's a bit confusing and I'm really, frankly, I wasn't willing to keep fielding questions on why isn't it working for me. <laughs> now I'm a bit more knowledgeable on it. I've discovered, I believe I've discovered the rigor with which you have to perform this process for it to actually work. I'm hopeful that this will work now for everyone and there'll be fewer questions to answer. So. So let's walk you through putting the files into the directory. The key here, and you'll see it a lot in Creality's literature, I just tended to disregard it, thinking, yeah, yeah, blah, blah. But in fact, in this particular process, it's really important to have just one file in DWIN set at a time. When you're flashing the kernel uh, upgrade, say you're taking yourself from 3.5 to 4.5 or 1.4 to 4.5 or 3.5, whatever you want to do. From what DGIS you have now on your display, you want to take it to a new one, just do that. Put just the DGIS kernel into the DWIN set folder, nothing else. Flash the DGIS 
kernel upgrade or, or downgrade if that's what you're doing. Note on the display a red text that says DJS whatever is now flashed. And then take that out of DWIN set, take that kernel file out, put the, in this case, the calibration CFG file into DWIN set as the only file in DWIN set and flash that. That will then instruct the display that next time you turn it on, you want it to be in calibration mode. Switch power off, switch power on, and it will be in calibration mode if all has gone well. With 4.5, that's going to be very easy to see, and I think I'll do that for you first so that you can see what it should look like at 4.5, but you can also see what's going on behind the scenes in effect with 3.5. Because with 3.5, there are actually calibration points at the four corners of the screen, but they're off screen and you can't see them. With 4.5, they're very visible. They're right in the screen and you can see them, so you realize that's what's happening. With 4.5, the crosses also present themselves as you tap the first one, the second one will appear, and as you tap the second one, the third one will appear, and so on. Again, with 3.5, with the screen not displaying the crosses, you don't see this progression. If you accidentally with trembling hand tap the same corner twice you may not finish the process completely and you may have to start it again uh, but you won't know until you've completed all four corners and then you're tapping on the screen and the dots are not showing up where you're tapping if they are you have succeeded if they haven't you've failed that that's your indication as to whether your calibration has succeeded at 3.5 at 4.5 it's the same indication you tap on the screen if that's where the dots appear as you tap, you're calibrated. And, and if it's not where they appear, you're not. Okay, so there's the words. We're going to get into the video now, and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. And that should give you enough information to be able to do it yourselves. Let's go. So this is where you're going to find the files that you're going to need today for your SD card. You're in the uh, CR6 community GitHub under the CR6 touchscreen repository. You're going to browse to doc for documentation, build for builders documentation, and down to release candidate 26 April 2022 v2. In here are DJ's kernel upgrade files, more than you're going to need. Because at the time I had other plans, but um, you're going to need 3.5. Just click on it takes you to a download button, hit the download button, it shows up on the bottom. I've already done that for these other files, but I'll show you where they're at. Right? So that's the 3.5. You want to do that again for 4.5. Click on it, hit the download button. Go to then, th that's the two uh, DJS files. Now you're going to need a configuration file. So you go here for developers, testers only, take the calibrate touchscreen CFG file. Click there, push download. And the fourth file, which you would have other ways of getting to it, but while we're here, dwin set. Scroll to the bottom, see CFG. Take, oh, sorry, I missed a piece. Uh, Windows is trying to protect me from myself here. A CFG file could harm your system. In these cases, uh, trust me, these are good. So you say keep and you do that again with this one, 272.480. And download. Say it, keep it. Now when we go to download, show in folder, in the download folders we have the 272.480 config, we have the calibrate config, we have the 3.5 bin and I took down before the 4.5 bin. Those are the four files you're going to need for your SD card. What I've done now is I've taken a single SD card. Uh, get back to your SD card. I've taken a single SD card. I have an empty DWIN set folder. Nothing there. I have these four files. So, what 
I'm going to do is first um, put 4.5 on my display. So I take the 4.5 thing over here and make sure that's where it went. I'm going to eject this card and the display will only read what's in DWIN set. It'll totally ignore everything else on the on the disk on the on the card. It'll only read this directory and it'll only read what's in there. And what it'll do is upgrade the operating system to 4.5 and that's all it'll do. So let's eject the card and demonstrate that. Uh, yeah, you're on the wrong... No, I was on the right thing. Where's my menu? Come on, guys. This is that not responding thing. I love Windows. Eject. There we go. It's safe to remove hardware. So, here's my display. This is my card the card going into the display. Now I happen to have my display in a I don't have my glasses on this and I have it in a, a standalone display holder so I can just put this in here if you're working with the OEM display you'll need to pull the cover off the back maybe to get at the card or maybe you have like I do an adapter where you can just plug the card in whatever it is you have to do you get your SD card into the display so that when you power it up okay, the red text across the top confirms that we've just flashed a different operating system than the one that was in there a little harder to read with the two characters on top of each other but in white underneath is a three and on top is red is a four we now have 4.5 installed just the one code file loaded, nothing else was in the directory at the time. And we power it off. And we take our card back. Now what we do is we go back into DWIN set. We take this out. I'm just dragging it over to the root directory is empty. If I wanted to be sure I had flashed 4.5 I could now take this card, put it in my display, flash the empty DWIN set, and I would see the DGIS 4.5 kernel on the top. I'm going to save myself a step. I'm just going to take the calibration touchscreen CFG, put that in DWIN set. So that's all that's in there. And I'm going to eject this drive. Oops, a little bit too soon while it's writing things in the background. There we go. So I can now remove the card. We put the card back in the display. You know, I'm really going to have to stop this taking the glasses off thing. So, now when we power up, what you see there is the colored screen of noise. The screen has reoriented because the instruction in the T5 LCFG file was to go to landscape from portrait mode, and that seems to be the result. You can't see the list uh, on the blue screen confirming the rest of the flash, so we have to take that on faith for a moment. We switch it off, and now when I turn it back on, it's already in landscape mode, so you will be able to see the display list everything as it flashes on. And it went really fast, but it'll be there in video, so you can go slow mo and see that. And now you see the 1x. Right? This is what calibration mode looks like on version 4.5. Very easy to understand. I'm going to reach in here and hold my display because it tends to slide around. And with a pencil, just a pointy thing, any pointy thing will do, tap the center of the X. Now a second one has appeared. Tap that one. A third one has appeared. Tap that one. There's the fourth. Tap that one. There's the last one. 
five dots everywhere but now when I dot everywhere I tap that's where the dot shows up now my screen is calibrated sometimes it seems not to recognize the touch because maybe I didn't touch it correctly in terms of how hard did I tap but there it is um, calibrated so now when I switch it off And I take my card out. The display is still in landscape mode. But it turns out the firmware with the display and so on that we've loaded for CF 6.1 is recognized by the hardware as being in portrait mode. So when I flash this up, watch what happens. Starts in landscape mode switches to portrait mode all by itself you could just leave it like that but it bothers me to do so so I'm going to put the CFG file back in okay. working beautifully whatever button I push that's the one I get so we know it's calibrated it is running 4.5 I should have pointed that out. You would have seen that if you go back on the video and look. You'll see 4.5 in white as having been written in uh, just before you see the X come up. So now we're good to go and if I now um, put the other CFG file back on it won't come up in landscape anymore when I power up. So power off. We go back into DWIN set. We take the Calibrate touchscreen CFG file out of there. DWIN sets now empty. We take the 272480 CFG file and put that in there. And that will reset the orientation and turn off the calibration mode. So, being rigorous here can't always see my touchpad anymore with all this hardware sitting around me. There we go. There's the only content of the DWIN fold set folder is the configuration file we want. So we eject that. We put that card back into our display. which is really hard when you're not wearing your glasses. There we go. We power that up. Now it's gone straight into the calibration mode. Interesting behavior. Not what I expected. But if I flash power off and power on Now I get my orientation change. Power off. Power on. Okay, so I'm getting my orientation change over and over. Okay, now I should be good to go. Um, <clears throat> what I want is to take the card back out. There's my display in portrait mode immediately. There it is with the buttons. Let's just prove we haven't broken anything. There you go. One calibrated display running DGIS 4.5. So if we were just going to flash 4.5, we could consider ourselves finished now. But what I want to do now is show you the same process, only different, with uh, 3.5. There are um, the, the most significant difference seems to be that I have to flash three times the calibration CFG file with 3.5, where I only had to do it twice with 4.5. Maybe that's another improvement they've made at 4.5. So we take the um, 272480 CFG out of DWinch 
set, leave it empty, go back to the root, take 3.5, burn that to the dwin set folder. So we have 3.5 and eject this card and go flash the display. Oh, write faster. Come on, there we go. Remove this card. We insert that card into the display. And when we power up, what it's going to do is change the operating system from 4.5 to 3.5. There it is in portrait mode. 4.5. 4 is in white, if you can tell, and the red is a 3. The red tells you that you flashed an OS and the fact that you can't read it cleanly because there's two different things overlapping each other confirms that you've changed it from the one that was there. Okay, One code file loaded, nothing else there. You see the CRC32 check? That only exists on the 4.5 machine, so it'll disappear when we next flash the CFG file. You won't see that line anymore, but that's one way of knowing that you have 4.5 running at the time that you loaded and flashed your card. So off we go. Now we take the bin file out of there, put it back in the root. We come back to the root. We take the configuration CFG file. We put that in DWIN set. Make sure that's all we have, and eject the card. We put the card back in the display, and this time what we're doing is we're loading the instructions to calibrate the screen. So we power up. One colored noisy screen confirming that we have changed orientation and that we have loaded the instruction set. Power off. Power on. We now have 3.5 loaded. We have loaded the configuration file a second time. But the instructions were already loaded the first time. It should now be ready to calibrate. So we take our little pointy pencil, hold the display steady, tap bottom left, top left, top right, bottom right. Use stinker. So power off. Power on. Do that again. Bottom left, top left, top right, bottom right. And there you are. So, turns out you got to do that on and off thing twice after the colored noise screen, not just once. And now we have it on film to prove it works. So I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to take the card out. I already have my CF61 loaded here, so all I should have to do now is power up. There I am in landscape mode. Back to portrait when I load the display. And it's working, okay? It's calibrated and it's running 3.5. So, same trick as before to get this back to something that's always portrait mode. We come back here, we take calibrate file out of DWIN set. We put the 272.480 config file into DWIN set making sure that's all that's there. 
And one last time, we eject the card. We put that card back into the display one last time. Power up. And all you see is a little blue dot in the bottom left corner. But that is the reoriented display on 3.5 coming back. So power off. Card out. And this process is now complete for a DGIS 3.5 screen. Confirm that with power on. Portrait mode immediately. One display ready to go. There we go. All is good. That should work for you too. Remember when you've gone past the colored screen and you have a blue screen landscape and it's very tempting to start poking, turn it off and turn it back on and then you can calibrate. And if you mess up, you should be able to turn it off and turn it on and go again without having to do that twice and reflashing everything. Because at this point, the instruction set is being read by the machine and is being executed. Good luck with all that. Um, if it doesn't work the first time, try it again. If you get uh, some new questions or you get confounded and it doesn't work after all, I'm playing the video back, didn't work. Please leave me some questions on the video and I'll do my best to solve the problem again. But at this point, we have a process that's repeatable and it's working. Enjoy!